welcome back to Pia Talks. We are back with more true crime. But before we get into that, if you have not subscribed, please do. Help me grow my channel by becoming a subscriber. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content. Today we are talking Dark Obsessions, Season 1, Episode 1. This episode takes place in Tucson, Arizona in 2010. We are following a lady named Heather. Heather is a really sweet, independent woman. She has a husband. She has nieces and nephews that she truly loves. She works at a grocery store for the last five years. She works at the coffee kiosk in the grocery store, as well as she also does the hiring for the clerks at the grocery store. During one of her hiring events, she meets a young man named Otero. Otero looks like a go-getter. He has a great interview with her. She thinks that he's going to be a strong team player with great skills, great customer service, so she hires him. At the beginning, Arturo seemed to be a very nice guy. He would always swing by the kiosk to say hello or check to see how she was doing. And she said that a lot of times, new people that she hired would often do that. She believed it was because they didn't know anybody else and they had met her during their interview and thought that she was nice or someone she could speak with. So she was used to that. Um, then it started to become a lot of comments about how pretty she looked that day and things like that. And she said due to not getting a lot of attention and comments at home from her husband, when Arturo would give her compliments or any man for that matter, she was really happy and surprised and she was okay with it because she was, you know, in need of a little bit of attention. Three months after she hired Artero, he came to her and asked if he could have a conversation with her and she said sure. He let her know that he was going through a bit of a custody situation and his ex-wife was taking his daughter away from him. She said that since he opened up to her, she thought it's okay for her to open up to him. Maybe she could speak to him a little bit. So she explained to him that she was having some issues with her marriage, that her and her husband were going through a tough time. And that was sort of a bonding conversation that he and her had. And she thought, this is great. I, you know, I have someone I can talk to. He can talk to me about his stuff and I can talk to him about my stuff. And you know, we can still work together. Five months after hiring Otero, she noticed that he started making sure that he would stop by to talk to her throughout every one of his shifts. It got to the point where he was there saying hi to her all the time. Sometimes he would actually follow her into the break room when she went on her breaks. One day he went into the break room after her and one of the managers of the coffee kiosk asked him to please leave her alone, please leave the break room, and they had a bit of an altercation. You should be working. What's it to you? She's going through a bad patch, bad home life, yeah? So mind your own business. Don't mind mine. Just get back to work. Get break, okay? I'm in charge. You're not You're in charge. Get back. Hey. In that altercation, I would have automatically said something is not quite right. Personally, ahead of that, I would have thought, why are you stopping by here so much? You know what I mean? Like, I, this is a whole lot of unwanted you know, visit. Yeah, that would have definitely been a red flag for me the way he acted with the manager of the kiosk. It turns out that the manager of the kiosk actually gets fired from the store because they have a no violence policy, a no bullying policy there. It is zero tolerance at the store. So he actually gets fired, which is really sad. Seven months after hiring Arturo, Heather finally gets the courage to leave her husband. She leaves him and she starts to pack up her place so that she can move to her new apartment. Otero shows up and helps her move. She says that she didn't ask him to help her move. He just showed up and helped her. Yeah, no. They didn't get into it further, but I'm thinking, how did he know where you lived? And how did he know to show up that day to help you move? And now that you've allowed him to help you move, he knows where your house is now, your new place. Well, she moves into her new two bedroom apartment and she said that she started to feel lonely. So she started hanging out more with Altiro. He would come to her place, she would go to his place and developed a friendship. 
At one point he tries to hit on her and she lets him know that she's not quite ready yet and she would like it very much if he would keep her personal business between the two of them and not bring it into work. Eight months after hiring Arturo, she starts spending time at his house. They start to get really close. They started to have a relationship. They started to bring sex into their relationship and they were pretty much a couple outside of work without telling people at work. However, everyone at the grocery store notices his behavior. He's always around. He doesn't like it when she's talking to other male customers or other male employees, and it's starting to bother people. One of the other employees didn't like it so much so that he or she reported it to management and Arturo was eventually fired. They told him that he was spending too much time worried about what Heather was doing, that he wasn't doing his own job. So they, you know, no longer needed his services. Heather goes over to his place to help him look for a job. And here for free. Oh, what you kidding, you fat whore? What? He would just start calling me names. He would just like flip from like saying mean, nasty things to saying really nice things. That relationship would have been over before it started. You have one time, one time to call me anything other than Pia and we are through. I'm sorry, I have no tolerance for it. I really don't. I try to do my best in any and all relationships not to be disrespectful. I will respect you as long as you respect me. As soon as you disrespect me, all gloves are off. Seriously, no way in hell. Mm -mm. That would have been over and done with absolutely not i cannot okay but she says that she has had this happen to her in past relationships and she really didn't want to have this but she accepts his apology i don't play that i don't play that there is no apologies for this i'm over here trying to help you mr i don't have a job no once he was fired that did not stop him from coming by the store he would still stop in from time to time to see what she was doing, who she was talking to. And it's very just not all right. It's not okay. And she thinks so too. Why aren't you out looking for a job? That would have been my first thing. Every time he came up to the coffee stand, I would have said, fella, why are you not out looking for a job? How do you have time to be in here regulating who I'm serving coffee to? Where is your job? I'm sorry, That that is just me. She later found out that also at night while she was asleep, he was checking her cell phone. No, 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 that's another no, no. Mm -mm. You, I don't get in your phone, you don't get in my phone. I, that is one thing that is the ruin of relationships. When everybody starts looking into everybody's phone, mm -mm. I don't touch anybody's phone. Don't touch my phone, I'm just saying. You remember that old saying your parents used to tell you eavesdroppers don't hear anything good? Mm -mm, that's the same with peekers. You want to peek into somebody's cell phone, you might find something that you don't want. That's all I'm saying. Just keep your heads off other people's phones. Heather ended up having a friend named Amanda come stay with her. Amanda and her have a great friendship and she was happy to see Amanda come stay with her. She was, you know, she had a two bedroom apartment so she definitely had the space. Her and Arturo hang out and they're having a pretty decent afternoon. And he says, let's go out to the restaurant that you and Amanda went to last week. And she says, how do you know about Amanda, number one? And number two, how do you know what restaurant we went to? She says, have you been in my phone? And this dude actually takes her phone and her purse and throws it into the pool at his apartment complex. Absolutely not. After I got finished jumping in that pool and grabbing all my stuff out of there or calling somebody to see if they have one of them big pool nets that they get the leaves out with to grab my purse. Uh-uh. I mean, what? <laughs> After I got that purse out of that water, a uh, boy, bye. Bye. I would have changed my phone number. Changed the locks on my door, even if he did have a key. I don't know if he has a key or not. They didn't say he did. But I would have changed the locks on my door anyway you know just in case add an extra lock i don't even know but it, it, no okay phone number would have been changed i would have asked the management at the store listen i don't want alturo back in here i mean it would have been very evident to everyone that i knew this dude is off limits 
she says that she didn't tell anybody at the store because she didn't want them to judge her. Go ahead, judge me all you want. I just want to be safe. After she wouldn't talk to him or answer his calls, he shows up at her house and she opened the door. I, I wouldn't have done that. You call me names. Oh, sorry, I was just looking for some towels. Oh, uh, sure, in one of the boxes. I would have never opened that door. Now I would have screamed through the door. Altero get the hell away from my door before I call the cops. That would have been it. Just that one warning. You get one warning. Get away from my door before I call the cops. That's it. And as soon as I get cops out, I'm already dialing 911. Just to let that be a lesson to you. Don't even try it. This dude, I just can't believe it. He continues sending her text messages. He sends her a text message of a bleeding heart saying, why can't they be friends? Mm -mm. Why can't you be sane? Mm -mm, we can't. A month after the breakup, this man is still calling and texting her nonstop. She should have got her number changed. He starts back to showing up at the grocery store to the point where he is hanging in there for hours, just sitting around the grocery store, hours. Can you imagine you are working the coffee stand and this dude has a seat right out there with the regular paying customers watching you for hours? There is no way. I security, security. Come and get this nut job out of here. I mean, what? She's still not telling everybody in the store or anybody about this relationship because she is afraid that people will judge her. At this point, girl, who cares? You need to get rid of this guy and be safe. Who cares if people judge you? Judge away. They were probably judging you for something else anyway. This dude starts coming to the house. Not again. Go away. Go away! No, I just want to see if she's, she's not all... here. Nine one one. Yeah, you would. Uh, hello, police. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. That would have freaked me the hell out. Freaked me all the way out. I would have been shaking. Like, are you really standing outside looking in the window? Now you're over here beating on the door. When Amanda calls 911, they tell her that since he's gone, there's nothing they can do, but she can come down and fill out a restraining order. And Heather didn't go get one. She did not go and obtain a restraining order. I don't understand why. Come on, ladies. Come on, people. Ladies and gentlemen, let me make sure that I include the men because women stalk too. I'm just saying, men might not get a restraining order because they think, oh, it's just a girl. Don't, don't do that. Everybody, man and woman, if you have the opportunity to get that restraining order, do that. It may not be a bulletproof shield, but it's something. And you need to get everything documented. Get it on record that somebody is stalking you. Your life matters. This is ridiculous. I was pissed that she didn't get a restraining order. Not that it probably would have helped because the way these people are, they get to you way before the cops do. This man was so completely consumed and obsessed with this woman that he never got a job. The man ended up getting evicted from his apartment and living in the back of his station wagon. Living in the back of the station wagon because he couldn't stop seeing her, seeking her, harassing her. Oh gosh, he is sick. He needed some medical treatment, seriously. Listen, Amanda said she cannot deal. She cannot deal with this craziness with Altero. Plus her grandmother wasn't doing well. So Amanda packed up and she moved out, leaving Heather alone in her apartment. And it was right then when I found out she was gonna be alone in her apartment, I said, oh, this is not good, Heather. Mm. Get that restraining order now. Get a new roommate quick. 
call somebody, you have to have other friends. I mean, at this point, I would rather reach out to my ex-husband for help. I mean, that's a lot. Heather believes Arturo thought that after he lost his apartment that maybe she would take pity on him and let him live with her, which I don't know why he would think that, but his mind wasn't right. So he might have actually thought that. Three months after the breakup, he's back to being in the store. She was getting fed up with it. Customers started to complain. So she had no other choice but to tell her manager what was going on. The manager escorted Artero the hell up out of that store and told him not to come back. He says to the manager, you know she's in love with me, but she's dirty and I'm gonna kick her A. At that point, I don't understand if the manager told her that or not, but if the manager did tell her that, that's another thing. Get a restraining order, call the cops, file some kind of report Put something in on the record that he's not allowed back on the premises at the grocery store or at your home. He already, he says you're in love with him and that he's gonna kick your A. Like what? No ma'am. Five months after the breakup, she is on her way to open the store. It is the crack of dawn. She goes to open the store and this dude is right there in front of her. She hurries up and rushes into the store and locks the door. Before she can get in the door, he says, it's been five months. You want to be my friend now? Uh-uh, uh-uh, no. No. As a matter of fact, sir, I don't want to be your friend now. And I don't even know you. But who I do know is the police. Get the hell out of here. I mean, what? No. Seven months since the breakup. Heather walks out of her door on her way to work and Arturo is standing right in front of her step. And next thing I know, like bullets are hitting me one by one. The second and third bullets hit my left leg and did massive damage. About after the third bullet hit, I don't think I felt anything. All I remember doing is falling to the ground. Four. Five. Six. Seven. He shoots this lady seven times. Seven times. And then walks away. She said as she lay there thinking that she was absolutely dying, she thought about her nieces and nephews. She thought about the people that she worked with at the store, the rest of her family, her friends, her future children that she was never gonna meet. She just lay there thinking, I'm going to die now. Then she started screaming for help. When she thought nobody was coming, she actually drug herself. This woman is bleeding from the mouth. So you know there is something seriously internally messed up. She drags herself across the sidewalk to grab her purse and dial 911. She's talking to 911 and they're asking her a bazillion questions. You know how 911 does. They ask you everything under the sun while you are just thinking, please quit asking me these questions. Please just get me some help. I can't really talk to you right now because I'm dying. You know what I mean? Luckily for her, two of her neighbors heard the shots and they called 911 and came over. She went to the hospital and she was able to fully recover. But do you ever really recover from that? Somebody that you once cared about shoots you seven times. They stand over and count as the bullets are entering you. No, that would be a nightmare for the rest of my entire life. I don't know about you, but watching that, real tears, I was crying my eyes out. I mean, what? I couldn't imagine. My heart goes out to Heather Yeager. <clears throat> police were able to capture Arturo the next day. He tells the police officer in his interrogation that, yeah, he, he shot her. 
he told them where the gun was and said, yes, I shot her seven times, but I'm not guilty. It, I, I don't make this stuff up. I mean, really, you're not guilty. You just told him you did it. I think that makes you guilty. This dude goes to court and decides that he is going to represent himself so he can ask her questions. The prosecutor said, wait a minute. They ended up convincing the judge to put a shock belt on this dude. And he has to ask her questions from the table. He's not allowed to approach this woman. You just stood over her and shot her seven times. And now you want to question her? She says that when she gets to the courtroom and she looks at him, he looks at her with that same expression, those same steely eyes that he looked down on her when he shot her. And she said she was spooked, freaked out. I get it, girl. She says that while she was on the stand, he asked her some weird, crazy questions that nobody understood and she didn't understand either. And then he was done with his questioning. When he gets on the stand, he says he shot her because she lied. She told him that she would be his friend. And after they broke up, she would not be his friend. He said he shot her seven times for every month that she did not accept his apology and become his friend. Well, at least he made it easy on the jury. They didn't have to guess or wonder. They already knew this man is nuts and he did admit to his crime. So they knew they weren't putting an innocent man to jail. Alterio Quiles, which I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, it's spelled Q-U-I-L-E-S. And I hope I didn't butcher that. If I did, I apologize. He was sentenced to 21 years for attempted murder and two counts of aggravated assault. Oh my God. I mean, this is crazy. And I also want to say that the story, the show, they had no photos of this guy. None. I went on line and I found a photo and I'm going to post it. I don't know if this is the actual guy or not, but it was connected to the story. So I'm thinking that it is him, but I cannot guarantee it. But man, I'm sorry. I, I just can't believe it. I cannot believe it. My heart goes out to Heather. And I am so happy this woman survived. I mean, you people cannot, you are not going to find a lot of people that are gonna tell you that they survived seven shots. Seven close range shots. I mean, dang, this one, this one hit really hard. I felt terrible. But you know what? She's alive and she's living and she's happy. So that's good for us. And so, until next time, bye.